I grew up on the sand, and I've been drawn to the ocean since, you know, before I could walk. Well, my mom brought me to Hawaii when I was three months old. You know, I, I think it was the 60s, and my mom, uh, you know, kind of maybe thought that was the end of the world. She didn't know what, you know, there was Vietnam and there was just all this stuff going on. And I think she really wanted me to have a different life. I think she wanted to escape California. And part of that had to do with that my father wasn't with her. And so she was alone. And, and, and I think she really desired a different opportunity for me. And, and, and she felt like it was out there, like go west, my child. <laughs> and so that was, you know, the birth of it. You know, I, I think that, that when I was young at the beach, I think I was a menace. You know, I think at a certain point, okay, here's Laird again, we better keep an eye on him so he doesn't drown. So I was a little bit of a liability, <laughs> I would say. There's stories of lifeguards coming to my mom's house and saying, well, Laird's, you know, out in the rip current again. And my mom would be like, no, he's in his room napping. And they're like, no, he's out in the rip current again. And I'd get rescued probably, you know, every other day for, you know, years. <laughs> when I met Bill Hamilton, who later became my father, the foundation of our relationship was body surfing because that's the most, uh, I would say, the most primal aspect of, of surfing. It's the purest form. It's no fins, no board, no, just your body and the, and the energy of a wave. And so I was, you know, at three, not a great swimmer. And so I would ride his back and use him like my own human dolphin, which my daughters, you know, do today. And so our relationship really was founded in the ocean, on waves, riding waves. And my first sensation of going inside of a wave and being in what we call a tube was on his back. I rode him into a wave and uh, would beg him to take me out and, and to do that. I think that was the, the foundation of our whole friendship and you know, and, and our relationship. You know, I've been needing a dad, so I, I've been kind of looking for one. Uh, at least I thought I did, because I was three and I didn't have one. So I thought he would be the perfect guy. He looked like the guy I wanted to be my dad, and he was a great surfer. And, and so I, I had a plan to uh, introduce him to my mother. And so I brought him home. I don't know how it was, but I got him back to the house and, and introduced them. And they had had mutual friends. And, you know, maybe I just thought I was I was being Cupid. But at the end, they, you know, they fell in love and got married. And, and he became my, uh, my father. And then I was surrounded by all these, you know, these men that were, you know, great surfers and great divers and great fishermen. And you look back at some of the Hawaiian culture and it was like the guy that was the great surfer was second only to the king because that skill and that knowledge was respected and admired by all. So at the end of the day, I, I did feel loved and protected. And I think that was probably the most important part that the, all these surfers had on me was that I, that I did have, a, I had a family, you know, and, and not having had really any family because we, my mom left uh, the little bit of family that we had on the West Coast to come to Hawaii alone you start to adapt your tribe. I might have been little, but they protected me and befriended me and, and you know, and at the end, I think that really was, uh, had a huge impact on me.